Hello, it's time for the weekly news update and it's a bit of a mad one. We've got leaks for days for our new generation VR tech, price drops, new games, new hardware, new drama, and some cool things. So I think that is enough chin wagging. I have a lot to go over. Hit subscribe. Let's get started. And starting with the constant stream of leaks for Meta's hardware reveal, it happens every single year without fail. The 3S has more photo leaks, some spec leaks, and a price leak in a week. Eek. So if you like to use headphones, you'll need to try and use a wireless solution for the Quest 3S or utilize a USB-C option. So that means no charging and playing with the link if you're using headphones, unless it's a wireless solution. I fear this is a new trend because Pico's latest headset also does not have a headphone jack and requires the same workarounds. There is also a battery power reveal, showcasing a battery that looks to offer less power than the Quest 3, but more than the Quest 2 with 16.7 watt hours. And with with the spec reduction from the Quest 3, because the 3S uses Fresnel lenses, the Quest 3's pancake lenses require brighter output, I would expect the same amount of battery life of the 3S model as the 3. And then the Quest price got leaked by Peacock in an official advertisement for the Quest 3. The end card included the Quest 3S and said, from $299.99. And we know the Quest 3 is 500, so that price is alluding to the 3S base model. And this price point, when it was for the Quest 2, made it a no-brainer to purchase. So I hope this means this holiday season, many more of you will be lucky enough to join us in the Oasis. And with these leaks, we got an official announcement for a Quest Touch Pro controller price drop. The incredible 360 track controllers with voice coil haptics have dropped from 300 to 250. And a rather smart move, I'm not sure if the Pro is really considered an option anymore, making the controllers more accessible could make more people purchase it, and you then have a toss-up between do I buy a Quest 3 standard or a Quest 3S with Pro Controller upgrades for a similar price. One annoyance I have with these Pro Controllers though is the battery life. In my current controllers for the Quest 3, I put a single AA battery in it and I almost forget about it because they last so long. The Pro Controllers also have an integrated battery, so it means you can't swap them out if the battery is dead. So when you pick up the controllers, it says they're dead, you have to wait and charge them instead of being able to just dive in and enjoy your VR experiences. And the reason for the battery drain is the remotes have a camera feed. It has an onboard chipset, so it will use more power. They're also a lot more buggy. When I had them and you initially start up the headset, the, the tracking and the initialization of the remotes is a is a bit of a pain. I didn't enjoy that. So pros and con, no pun intended. A little bit of sad news now, the Marvel Powers United project that allowed you to experience and play the old VR Marvel title that got taken down from the official store where you can embody your favorite Marvel characters and engage in some basic combat. The idea of this project was to enable owners of the game before it got taken down to enjoy the experience again. But annoyingly, it apparently infringed upon Meta's copyrighted files within the project. So Meta had asked them to shut down the revival project when the team was so close to releasing a multiplayer server support update so we could play with our friends again. There is a Stop Killing Games initiative that they have shared as well that I'll link down below in the description if you want to sign it. Show your support as we've had too many loss of titles that we love. They keep being removed from the platform, either fan made or official when all we want is just to enjoy things that we love. Love. So it's a little sad, but I have to thank the guys in the Revival Project community for the time, at least, that you gave us back. And since that was something that we have lost, I want to now talk about something we have gained. Something that is more than just an emulator. It is the ability to run Windows on our headsets. So you can play Windows software apps and games on the MetaQuest headset. This project has been broken for several months, but there is a new update release that's just dropped on SideQuest that has now fixed this and it's now playable. So this is based upon the Wine project, when Wine stands for Wine is not emulator, which is quite funny. It reminds me of YAML, if anyone knows that. This leverages Windows APIs usable on other platforms like Linux, Solaris, BSD, and this has been taken and adjusted to support Android use. So people in the community have done incredible things with this. They've managed to run games like Stray, which is a pretty new title. Granted, they're playing it on rather low resolution and FPS, but it was running on a Quest 2. These games running are of course in 2D, but this is where the use of reshade comes in. It's a way that enables us to render the games in true stereo. And the craziest trick is that Lubos, 
Hi, sir. The author of the XR integration for Winlater added a 3DOF mode where the head rotation is mapped to the mouse movement, meaning if you combine reshade and this, you can have 3D stereoscopic view and head tracking on Windows PC titles. That's how people were able to experience things like Call of Duty 2 on Quest. And it even enables the ability, if you are into this, to play San Andres in first person mode with a stereoscopic view and head track gameplay. So if you're interested in this, I will link it down below if you want to do some fiddling this weekend and enjoy Win Later XR. Time for the quick fire news. Just some short and nice to know stories like games coming soon, industry updates and the like. So first of which is Meta have reportedly signed an agreement with Ray-Ban to extend their partnership on their smart glasses, which should go well into the next decade, which is interesting because it was reported recently that Google were trying to have conversations with the luxury eyeglass brand to partner up with them for some Gemini AI glasses. And it looks like they said, no! Meta Ray-Ban are selling like hotcakes. We're going to stay here. So we should see Gen 3 and Gen 4 of these glasses. I wonder what features they'll have. We do have more sad news. I do apologize. One of the top VR studios, End Dreams, is facing a series of layoffs due to the challenges in the gaming market, not just VR. So End Dreams was purchased by Aonic in 2022 when VR was really peaking and they were bought for $110 million. But now at the end of 2024, not that long after, it is having to reduce the workforce by around 17.5%. And it's not just End Dreams that have to do this. Xbox have just laid off 650 people and Sony just laid off 900 people as well. It's Tough times out there. But let's talk about things a little bit more exciting. A new game coming soon to the quest called Dumb Ways to Die. And you're correct, this comes to mind. Dumb ways to die. And that's because this is actually tied to the Metro campaign in Melbourne that made that. So they have taken that brand and created a party game of over the top mini game set in an airport on a deserted island that will result in dumb ways for you to die if you're not careful. This is a multiplayer experience as well. It'll start off with 50 mini games and you can play this with five friends online. And it will have two DLC expansions coming by year end, bringing a total of 100 mini games. And another game is Thrill of the Fight 2. They also gave us an announcement trailer that went beyond the teaser that I showed you last week. And it's like they heard us complaining about, where is the gameplay? And the devs went, hold my poodle. It gives me such Fight Night vibes. The way the trailer is designed, it looks like such an upgrade from the first title. Better visuals. You can even see the creases in the acrylic and foam. Better AI movement, unless they're playing online and that's a real person they're fighting. Bigger crowds, grander environments. This game is sweaty business, loved by the community, and I'm so excited for it. This is, this is, I think this is considered a staple now in standalone. And finally, a bit of a quick one because I don't have too much to express about it apart from sadness because it's the same old story from them. Vive have just revealed the focus vision, which looks fantastic. It looks nice. The design looks great, but it just confuses me. A rear battery, 2.5K displays, Fresnel lenses, what? An XR2 Gen 1 chip, huh? But improved sensors for color pass through and depth perception and improved RAM. Also has eye tracking support. And it would have made sense to me if they had pancake lenses, but they're also offering the ability to have PC VR display port with the addition of a $150 adapter to enable it. So you can provide the USB data and video feed. So I, I kind of see this as a PC VR option, but one that makes concessions to fit into the standalone space. I just find it all confusing. Why is it using a pre-gen chipset? And it has to deal with high resolution output. I think it's fairly evident that they are focused on enterprise business, but they make their products available to consumers. Uh, cool little feature on this headset though, which again, strange if you know much about the VR space, is they have the ability for hot swappable batteries because the visor will contain a little battery that should last 10 minutes of charge so you can swap them out. So you likely have to buy another battery, another cost, great. But then the battery is in the front of the device, which makes it even heavier, which means it's more uncomfortable and hurts your face. And it is going to cost you $1,000 plus $150 for the adapter, plus more for the battery, I suspect, when you can buy a Quest 3S now for $300, which has an upgraded chipset and still has Fresnel lenses. Is it worth $800 more for a DisplayPort? Let me know your thoughts on this one. I'm... 
I just don't get it. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Please consider subscribing and joining me for next time because I am going to San Francisco to check out MetaConnect. So I will be on the forefront of the news over the next week. So let me know if you have any questions and have a great week. Happy gaming, guys. Good day!